Vehicles with air suspension are increasingly common. You as a workshop owner are confronted with them more and more often. Now you can find out what challenges this poses. Maybe they're not as big as you think. To learn more about the technology of the air spring, we have to look inside because nothing is that visible from the outside. But inside there are many components that are recognized from a normal shock absorber. Correct, basically the main functions are the same. If you look at this, we have the shock absorber, in this case an electronically adjustable shock absorber, the pressure stop, the cup bearing, the dust protection sleeve. These are components that we also have in conventional suspension systems. In addition, of course, we have an air spring which is then filled by the compressor via the control unit. So really not that different. Now, a car like this comes into the workshop. What does that mean for me as a mechanic? Yes, we all know the situation. There's no need to feel uncomfortable with a test procedure because basically the components are well designed and safe. Of course, you have to know which test steps we use. So when we have a vehicle like this, we first check whether there is a button or an operating function, whether the car lift mode can be controlled, if necessary, with a diagnostic device. Or there are now vehicles that recognize this automatically, of course, via the height sensors on the wishbone and thus automatically go into the jacking mode. What I personally recommend is never to lower the vehicle completely from the lift, but first to lower it in stages and then, of course, to start the engine because then I get the signal via the compressor, I don't have enough air in the system. The compressor is controlled via the vehicle and then fills the air spring so that this component or components can then naturally protect themselves from damage. Otherwise, you might potentially create an issue. What about the visual inspection? Because if I look at it from the outside and I don't see any component, how can I check whether something is broken? Exactly. The normal inspection for oil leakage, for example, is no longer possible here because everything is encapsulated. This is actually a great advantage for the external installation, but during the test, the oil can no longer leak out like this. However, this is only one defect that I can have on the suspension or on a shock absorber. Of course, it is also important to listen during the test drive to see how the driving stability is and to evaluate that. Furthermore, I can of course control the solenoid valves and also check the condition of these components. Okay, so we've discovered that the shock absorber is defective. What is the procedure for removing and replacing the parts? Exactly, it is important that they are always replaced in pairs. When you order new components like this, you also have to check the shelf life. We produce air suspension modules where we then have a primary pressure to simply protect the function, the safe function and the longevity of the individual components. That means that the rubber bellows has a preformed shape and so that it doesn't bend and dip and a predetermined tear seam is created, we naturally fill it with air pressure. Okay, so you can see now that there are a few special requirements, but everything is feasible and can definitely be managed. Now, there is a special tool. This here, what's it all about? This is the installation gauge we use for the 211 series. This is the E-Class. Time and again, we receive inquiries from customers to say that the rear of the vehicle has completely sagged or that the air spring has burst and so on. To avoid this, we also supply this installation gauge to make the work in the workshop easier. The fact is that this air spring with a compensation reservoir is basically used for vehicles in the E-Class 211 series with Airmatic. This is not with level control, but for vehicles with Airmatic. They have the air suspension system at the front and rear. To install this component completely, you have to remove the entire rear axle and the amount of work and preliminary preparation is extensive. It's important to follow these individual steps so that you don't have to repeat this and have no complaints in the workshop. When we are ready and have inserted the air spring bellows, we use our diagnostic device to control the air supply via the compressor. This means that we first have to create a primary pressure so that the system fills up in the right direction. 
The next step is to use this installation gauge. You're welcome to do that. Down here, right? Correct. Now, basically, we've shown the safe alignment of the air spring to the wishbone and to the vehicle so that it doesn't deform and fold over the roll fold because that's how we ensure the safe function of that component. In the further steps, we fill them naturally, continue to fill them and then slowly lower the vehicle. Again, in the end, we don't lower the vehicle with its full weight on the wheels, but always gradually. So, to avoid costs, every step is really important here. That's why you, from the Buchstein Academy, are available at all times. And that means you are also happy to help your colleagues to avoid costs, because, of course, the whole component can break. Now, what does that look like? Correct. We have a component here where, of course, the installation steps were not followed. To make the work easier, the pressure hose to the reservoir was disconnected. Connected. Of course, this resulted in consequential damage because the spring was depressurized and could no longer align itself properly. And then, of course, the spring buckles, and when the suspension compresses completely with the full weight, it cuts itself and the product is no longer usable. So, it is really important that the steps are followed. And to get information from the Bielstein Academy, you will be there. That means, if you are unsure, you can call and ask, and you will also be happy to guide your colleagues in the workshops. Yes. Especially when it comes to spare parts, there are many different prices in the air spring sector. And we want to talk about these prices and where the differences come from. We often have those queries, especially during such training courses. But there are customers who look on the internet and there are shock absorbers and air suspensions, for example, that cost only a fraction. And that's why we in the academy naturally procure such things and then, of course, look closely at what's behind them in order to share our experiences. Of course, we don't talk about other companies during the training, but we talk about our product because that is exactly what we need. We've cut open a model here as an example. In this case, you can see the differences to what we offer as a spare part. These are parts that already have new coating processes. This is the old Chrome 6 coating. That is to say, the Mercedes 220, which was produced for the first time in 1999, had exactly such systems in it, and nothing was actually changed here, but rather they looked at what was broken. What can we do? There is a lot of talk about reconditioned components, but in the end, they are only repaired. That means, for example, that only one rubber part is replaced, but everything else is still old and can break again. That's right. That means they look carefully at what is broken and repair it. From the outside, of course, it is repainted and so on, so that everyone actually thinks from the outside, ah, oh, I know this from before, a replacement engine, a replacement alternator, everything is new. I can install that without hesitation. It's just been repaired here. The thing is, we don't know. How old is this shock absorber? How long has it been running? Has it perhaps already run 200,000 kilometers? The workshop buys two refurbished shock absorbers, air suspensions, and there's the problem that it gets two, installs them in good faith, but one part is an old one with 200,000 kilometers, the other with 80,000, and we don't have the right driving behavior at all. Now, over here on the third damper, I see immediately there are these two screws that I don't see here at all. Exactly, you mentioned that exactly right. Let's just take a look at the damper. Not the air spring, but the damper. Now we can see the following. We have a system here, I can show it again briefly. We have two tubes, a bottom valve, that's quite clear, it's a twin tube system. Let's look at the whole thing again in the original equipment. Here's a separating piston, that is, we know it's a monotube system, that means it's not at all what has been built into the vehicle as standard. Then, if we take another close look at this damper, we said we would go only into this inner part, we can see the electromagnet here. And where there should actually be a valve, because that's what the electromagnet is there for, to open and close in order to enable a bypass and adjust the damping force, there's nothing at all. 
That means that we have an electronic system, the whole vehicle thinks everything is fine. Everything is checked again and again through the CAN bus system. I can press the sports button, for example, and it lights up, but in the end, this valve is missing. That means we just have a block like that here. That means that when I get a replacement part, as you've often said, it can look great from the outside, but on the inside, we notice that it's either not a replacement, as good as new, but only individual parts of this component have been changed, or there are even components missing, as in this case. With Bierstein, it's different. When I order a spare part, I have a new product in my vehicle again, and thus have the best quality again over a long period of time. That's because we build these parts. We are the OEM supplier. Why should we make any differences? We can't say, yes, this is the original equipment, we only make the best parts for it, and on the aftermarket we'll get something cheap. But we have this standard and our commitment to quality. Air springs themselves have been in the market since the Borgwart P100, which was not a very common car, but it was actually the first vehicle. Nowadays many vehicles are equipped with air suspension systems. It may be that this is fully equipped, meaning front axle and rear axle, or maybe just the rear axle is a level control. So you see, it really depends on the details, not only when ordering spare parts, but also when installing them. That's why I have to know my way around as a mechanic, and that's why the Bielstein Academy offers online training. How long does that take? Uh, it takes about an hour. That means we discuss all kinds of things. The dates we offer are on our workshop page. At the same time, we prefer to offer face-to-face -face training, which means that we like to go out to the workshop, to the workshop evening, and that will take one and a half hours and we'll go into more detail. That means we also take a look at the vehicle's electronic system, active systems and shock absorber systems. And it has to be said quite clearly that we do not stop after one and a half hours we don't just stop, we stay until all questions have been clarified. So as a mechanic, I really don't have to take that much time to avoid trouble. And as a workshop, it means new target groups and even more potential.